Hello, welcome to Porting and Polishing Tips. You're here with TJ. Um, you can find me online at ccspecialtools.com and um, you can also reach me at twostrokecentral.com. This is the third part in my series about the two-stroke ports and uh, just trying to give you a little extra information. Now I know that there'll be lots of trolls come along here shortly to uh, tell me blah 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 this is this and that is that. Don't really care. Um, like I said, and probably after I turn the camera off, I'll think about 10 other things I would like to tell you. Uh, that aside, we're going to move on to the third part of the series, and that's the exhaust port. First thing you'll notice, this cylinder is upside down, but that was just so you could see the exhaust port better. It's kind of at a weird angle. But uh, this is the exhaust port. This is what lets the uh, spent uh, burnt gas out. Um, it, uh, it serves as exhaust. Now hooked to this will be the uh, pipe and hopefully you're tuned in um, professionally tuned in pipe. Uh, we'll hook into that and the other thing you might notice about the exhaust port is that on this little smaller one it's easier to show. Here's your intake, here's your exhaust. Your exhaust port is always going to be higher on the cylinder. Why? Because it comes into play sooner in the descent of the, you know, your pistons moving up and down here. Uh, it comes into play sooner in the descent because it's letting that escaping, uh, burnt, spent uh, charge out. So, moving on. Um, with your exhaust port, there are a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things that are critical. In particular, this upper roof. I hope you can see that. This upper roof back here. Why is this upper roof important? Because it, uh, the timing of it. Uh, is critical and where your power band is uh, comes in, where, what RPMs your, your cylinder is tuned for. Now the reason I say that is timing is that always in relation to as the piston moves up and that you see you have your cylinder head here, the bolts on here with uh, or just the top like this, um, where the spark plug goes. But uh, as the piston moves up and down through here, it moves past this port opening and closing. And where these are closed, or the piston opens them or closes them, is your is determines your timing, which is at what degrees of rotation of the crankshaft down here. You know, you have your crankshaft rotating down here with the piston and the connecting rod. You know, rotating this, uh, moving as the piston moves up and down through here. <coughs> what degrees of rotation that is is uh, what we're referring to when we're talking about timing. Now, how it plays a role in your exhaust port is this upper roof right here. At what point in the rotation of the crank that this starts to open and the piston moves down and opens it uh, is critical to where your power band is. Why? Because the returning exhaust wave that uh, now your, your tune pipe, you, if, you, if you're kind of new to two strokes, you'll notice a lot of tune pipes or all, all two strokes will have the pipe that expands out and contracts back down. Uh, kind of has like, it, it's a tuned pipe. And those pipes are tuned usually to a specific, in a specific way. Why? Because it, they actually play a role, a functioning role. They reflect or refract an exhaust pressure wave back into you. Now that reflected exhaust pressure wave keeps that new charge that's coming in, in here. Uh, so it just it doesn't just escape back into there, okay? Uh, and that, that's important. Why is that important? Well, that pressure wave is typically going to take 0 0.003 seconds to get back to here. Okay. And so because of that, it, say you have this upper roof move, you know, you're moving it up and down, changes your timing. So say you have this upper roof of the exhaust port where it starts to open at 80 degrees of rotation. Well, that means your that in turn means that your cylinder will basically be tuned for 10,000 RPM because at 10,000 RPM it takes the uh, by because of the rotation it takes it uh, about 0 0.003 seconds to get back for the uh, degree of rotation of 260. <sighs> okay, so what that is saying is because of where the upper roof of here is it uh, determines your your timing. Uh, to get into more detail, if you move it, if this was down further and it didn't open until 9,000 or, or till, uh, until 100 degrees of rotation and put your RPM timing closer to 
9,000 RPM. I wish I could get into all the complexity of that, uh, but you can find the formula where I explain it in detail online at ccspecialitools.com in my tips and techniques section under TJ's two-stroke tips. You'll, you'll get, roll down through and see the part about the exhaust port, and uh, it will explain that in depth. I wish I could go into all the details of that, but I, I just don't have time in this format. So let's move on to the next thing. We'll flip it upside down and we'll go to texture of the exhaust port. Uh, because that plays a critical role in, I feel it play, plays a critical role in porting. You'll notice this uh, texture, there is no texture to, or the finish on this exhaust port is nice and smooth. Maybe not very smooth, but that smooth as can be to the touch. The reason that is, is a couple things. One, it's more efficient. Two, it uh, interferes with the return or reflected pressure wave less. And three, and most importantly, it decreases the amount of carbon buildup that we'll get here. So if the carbon, the exhaust carbon or soot or whatever you want to call it, can adhere to this very well, well, it doesn't start to build up and decrease the cross-sectional volume, interfere with the efficiency, so on and so forth. Um, you can even treat this with some stuff to kind of help with that. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail on that either, but um, the other thing that you need to know about your exhaust port is where this upper roof of this uh, exhaust port is determines your trapping volume. Also, the upper roof of your boost, this is boost our auxiliary um, exhaust ports. Where those upper roofs are determine your trapping volume because once the pistons come up here, once it moves past here, this is closed out. Uh, up until then, uh, the new charge or air fuel mixture can still escape out here, but once it's closed, that's it. This gas that's, once it gets past here, the gas that remains, or the volume that remains in here is being compressed, okay? So that's your trapping volume. So the upper roof of this also plays a role in that. As you move it upward, obviously you decrease your trapping volume. Or if you move these up, they decrease the trapping volume. Now these, I'll briefly go over our boost auxiliary ports. What they do is they increase the cross-sectional volume uh, of our potential airflow that can come out here. They just, it's making it bigger. It's like, hey, I can't get any bigger here, so I can add ports on the side. That's really all that does. Uh, they don't play as critical role in the timing uh, as far as the reflected pressure wave because it's going to be centered to here. It's not going to want to shoot out. The timing of it shooting out into here is a little bit different, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about the uh, exhaust port. Like I said, I'll probably think about 20 different things I could have uh, also mentioned. Uh, the timing uh, as far as when this opens in degree of rotation and what that creates a tune for as far as how many RPMs you're your, your uh, cylinders tuned for. That gets complex. I recommend that you read it over in my tips and techniques section. It can explain that a little bit more. But uh, it's based on the principle that that reflected exhaust wave will take about 0 0.003 seconds to return to this point. Hope this helps you out. I hope this is uh, enlightening you a little bit more about two strokes. Uh, like I said, there's probably a million other things I could have told you. We don't have time to right now. Because uh, it's a video and uh, my, my voice is going to be frank. Uh, but I hope this helps. I hope this has told you a little bit about two strokes. And uh, uh, like I said, you can find more online at ccspecialitools.com. Or you can also reach me at twostrokecentral.com, which is a great little forum for uh, two-stroke enthusiasts and people that want to get into tuning and building.